Good morning, guys. This is View from the Pew. It is Monday, May the 10th. Actually, it's View from the Pastor Study, but we're going to be moving around this week. I'm planning on being near or by one of our schools tomorrow and using that as a backdrop. And then I have another location, hopefully the location, starting Wednesday of where we'll be doing our uh, awakening event that's coming up in April 2022. Today, I'm going to ask you if you're going through the prayer guide, if you're a member of our church. If not, I'm going to share with you as we go along each day. If you're going through our prayer guide, we're on Monday. So let me share with you the emphasis of prayer. Yesterday, we prayed for an increased sensitivity to God's holiness, and I challenged you to pursue holiness in your life and what that meant. But let's talk about repentance today. We're praying for genuine repentance and obedience among individuals and churches genuine repentance and obedience among individuals and churches and pray for the awakening team our leaders are scott smith who's from atlanta georgia and derek burt derek burt b-u-r-t from natchez first baptist church in natchez there's a picture of both of those guys if i get too close it gets fuzzy but uh, i'll try to have some info in the uh information section above this video telling you a little bit more that can point you to information about Derek and Scott. They're coming to lead us next April and you need to be in prayer for them. And I want to take a few minutes and talk about genuine repentance. What is repentance? Well, the word in the uh, <clears throat> Greek language has the idea of a change of mind. But it's not just any change of mind. It's a change of mind with genuine results. That occur it's not just going oh I feel so bad about what I've done and then turn around and going doing the same thing there's genuine change there's a genuine mindset change toward that thing not just expressed emotionally the emotions are not the driver because emotions will do this on you but it's it may produce emotions but it starts somewhere deeper it starts with your will it starts with perspective so let me share with you a passage from 2 Corinthians 7, 2 Corinthians 7, and Paul is encouraging them because the Corinthians have been through some sin situations and now they're experiencing or expressing real repentance. So let's start at verse 9, 2 Corinthians 7, 9 through 11, 2 Corinthians 7, 9 through 11 and listen to what he talks about when he talks about repentance now remember we're primarily focusing this time on speaking to believers this is the awakening that has to occur before the awakening this is the revival of God's people that needs to occur before we get to this outreach time if we're not ready as God's people we won't be ready when the time comes and God wants us to be ready so let me read to you what Paul said professing believers Christians listen he says now I rejoice not that you were made sorry but that your sorrow led to repentance for you were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing for godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation and I would say that doesn't only apply to the salvation that we think about with regard to eternal salvation. It talks about the salvation of a church that may be struggling with sin or the salvation of an individual regard to issues of holiness. There's a, there is a present work of salvation that works itself out in a Christian's life that we call sanctification. And that can apply to this as well. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation not to be regretted but the sorrow of the world produces death so there's a worldly sorrow that doesn't lead to any change it doesn't lead to any repentance it leads to death but we're not looking for worldly sorrow we're looking for godly sorrow for observe this very thing hey Corinthians pay attention that you sorrowed in a godly manner what diligence it produced in you what clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication in all things you proved yourself 
to be clear in this matter. Whatever the matter was, they proved themselves to be clear in this matter. And that's really what real repentance does as it expresses ourself. Let's just take any sin issue in your life. It begins with a clearing up or an exposing of a real perspective about that specific sin and the sinfulness of that sin. As it becomes real to you and it dawns on you and you see the path where you need to turn and turn back to God, then there is a sorrow that comes upon you, but it's not a sorrow that necessarily will lead to crying and running down the altar, but it may. But it's sorrow, it's a deep-seated sorrow that says, I have broken God's heart, I have failed to live up what he's called me to do, and he has by his grace provided me a way to turn. Now I need to take advantage of that, I need to step into that, I need to do that, I need to give evidence that change has become permanent for me. And so he says, I rejoice because you have a godly type of sorrow, not a worldly type of sorrow, but a godly type of sorrow. And it's leading particular things. He says, check this out, guys. Uh, you've got diligence in you. This isn't just feeling bad on Sunday and doing the same thing you were doing on Monday. It's This is from now on, I am different and I am changing. Diligence. It's a clearing of yourself. I'm going to deal with sin. I'm going to get my name back where it needs to be. I'm gonna get my character back where it needs to be. A clearing of yourself. Indignation. You know what? We ought to hate sin. We ought to hate sin more than anything else. Indignation. Let me see what else there. What fear. I think that's the fear of the Lord. What vehement desire. A very strong desire to do what's right. What zeal. There's a hotness to it that you want to get things right. I think back on the things I used to do when I was a young person. The sins I used to commit. And I'm like, man, I can't believe I did that. There's a zeal to never do that again. Never walk that path. It's not a matter of getting caught or not getting caught. It's, I know God is aware of my every action and I don't want to displease him. I want to please him. I love him. And I, I've, I'm ashamed by what I've done. There's, there's a vehement desire to turn to God and away from sin. And then he says, in all things, you proved yourself. That means you gave evidence of real change. So that's what I'm praying for. Our, our prayer request <clears throat> is genuine repentance, real repentance and obedience. Let me say this. When you experience genuine repentance, a genuine 180, where you turn to God from sin in your mind and in your perspective, in your heart, in everything, when there's that real turn, there will be obedience. There'll be a desire to be obedient. The word that'll come out of your mouth first is, what shall we do? Now, I know this is going a little long today. I just want you to hang with me. This is so important. Unless we experience genuine repentance, it will not matter. So let's pray that God's people will experience genuine repentance today. And I want to encourage you, as you pray for that, pray for these two men. Pray for Scott Smith. Pray for Derek Burt. Pray that God will work in their hearts, their lives, prepare them this time as well. May God give us real repentance and prepare our hearts for the awakening to come. God bless.